Okay, Van, how are you today? Very good, very good. Stuart, nice to see you again. How are you a good keeping? week? Busy week? Good week. So, so far, so good. Uh, hopefully nobody comes and, and <laughs> spoil it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you never know. You never know what can go uh, wrong today, Tuesday. There's still a few more days to go, so there is a possibility that that could happen. But yeah. uh, you've had a... Um, uh, uh, some more experience dealing with bu bureaucracy, this time again with the the DGT, the Dirección General de Tráfico, uh, indeed, which is indeed, the equivalent of the, uh, what's the British one called? D DBLA, uh, in, in, DBLA oh. in, in the UK, I don't know, in, in Australia, right. and I never drove right. in Ireland apart from rental cars, so I never dealt with them. <laughs> <laughs> well, in Australia, in Australia, as we know, it depends which state you're in. I think it has a different name, but uh, uh, in Australia, in WA, I think it's just called the the licensing department or the traffic department or something like that. But mm -hmm. uh, you've had an experience there because they are a difficult group of people to get in contact with, and you've been trying to get an appointment for for how long to to see them? I think probably since October I have been checking. They, there is a couple of ways to try to get an appointment. Obviously, the main one being the, their own website. Uh, but yeah. also they have this uh, 060, oh, 060 uh, telephone number, the Atención al Ciudadano, that is basically kind of like a like a service. Is that a, is that a, is that, is that a free line or is it one of these ones that you have to Oof. pay for? I didn't ask, to be honest. Hopefully, hopefully it's the free line being a, a public service, but you never know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> let's let's put it as a decent. free one. But basically, yeah, it's, a, it's a number. With that... numbers. <laughs> exactly. Maybe you will be diverted to some kind of a special tarification number of That's some it. sort. That's it. <laughs> but anyway, anyway. So, so, so you're trying since October to get an appointment, and uh, mm. you finally got one. I finally got one. Uh, just well, I think it's ba mainly been in Madrid, been the the issue that is I don't know very busy or again with the COVID skews and reduced number of staff. I don't know. I'm just I'm just guessing, but probably in those lines. And in Madrid, we have three offices, uh, as far as I know, one in Alcorcón. The main one that is in uh, Arturo Soria, I believe, and this which one, in, in, uh, which is not, it, so I'm just going to say the one in Arturo Soria is the main one, but it's not, it's not the center of Madrid. It's not like if you go to like the Ministry of uh, uh, Finance, yeah. which is bang in the center. It's sort of on the outskirts of Madrid, Arturo Soria. Yeah, it's very close to the, well, for those that know a little bit of Madrid, in between the M30 and the M40, more towards the M30 and close to the A2. So at least more or less you can place yourself in, in the map. That's it. Um, this one in, in Alcalá de Henares. So, yeah, there's so many people advise me in the office and, and acquaintances that, you know, go to Guadalajara, get an appointment in Guadalajara, get an appointment in Toledo, get an appointment in Segovia. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and when I checked, there, there was availability in those places, but not having a car and needed to rent oh, a car to actually yeah. go there, it was a little bit uh, <laughs> not not as straightforward. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think the problem in Madrid is that, and and obviously this is, you know, you know, I'm not saying anything new here, but Madrid, what six million people or something, or seven million. Yeah people living in the Comunidad de Madrid and there's only three places, as you said, that, that people can go to. And if you're living right. in uh, the capital city, uh, Arturo Soria is obviously the one that you're going to try to go to and that's, you know, three or four million people trying to get appointments to there. I'll just right. uh, go off the, I'll just say uh, here quickly that uh, I have a friend who is a, a gestor and uh, for people that don't know, a gestor is a, sort of like a, a bureaucratic middleman that that takes care of uh, things that are difficult to do with the, the public entities, for example, traffic is one. And uh, yeah. this friend of mine specializes in traffic and uh, he's grown his business from two or three people 10 years ago to 13 or 14 people today specializing only in traffic. And basically what they do, Ivan, is they get files of uh, – things to do from people like yourself that need to do basic mm. things at the traffic department. They get a big, thick file and they they go there themselves and they get everything you know taken care of because they know the people that work there. They know how the system works. And I think for gestores, they also have special um, ways to, to, to get seen to. Yeah, I don't know if they will have a special desk or, or something like that or maybe they can just go don't with... Know. 
whatever number of cases and deal with them all at the same time. But yeah, it, 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 it is true. And at the end of the day, if you go there on a weekly basis or in a daily basis, at the end, you, you build well, that, that relationship. Da, daily, da, daily basis, yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah, you know, for the DGT, I, I don't think that it's like especially uh, terrible procedures. The problem is that it's very time consuming. So, you know, I totally understand this is, this the, is the, problem. the citizens and, and the people who actually go and, and pay these gestores because at the end of the day, you are buying your own time and. I, I waste a, I waste a morning literally I waste a morning and thanks God now That's with it. the remote working I have the phone with myself I have the laptop with myself but first of all Alcala it wasn't the the easiest place to get to without Did my you own. To take a, you had to take a train. I had to rent a car. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you rented a car. Okay. I rent a very so you very. Could have, you could have gone to Guadalajara. Pretty much, pretty much, but this one consumed less petrol in the in the A2. <laughs> oh, okay, was it one of those electric ones, was it? I, no, I, I got the, the very, very basic and a very, well, we haven't met yet, but I'm a very big chap and uh, 193 in centimeters, around 6, 4 in, in feet. And I got this. So you have trouble of, fitting into those small cars. <laughs> Imagine this kind of a smart or Fiat 500 with a very big chap there with the wheel <laughs> behind the wheel. <laughs> so yeah, so it you was need a, a big car. One. Yeah, but it was cheap. You know, it was cheap. And when I checked, I said, okay, how much is going to be a taxi? How much is going to be the transport? The transport from when I leave, it was a, a two hour and a half. It's, it's just because where I live, uh, you know, in, in a straight line, I don't live very far away from, from Alcala. And I live more or less around Barajas. Just, just to put a, a spot in there, but the transport I have to like go go in, in circles a, a little bit to try to go to. Yeah, you have to go into, the, to, into more into the center, get a bus or. That's correct. It. So then I check, you know, how much is going to be a taxi or, or an Uber, and you know, I, I put everything balance it out. And again, because I live close to Barajas, it, it was very easy for me to go to the airport, and you know, all the rent a car companies are in there. I get the cheapest that I could find for I think it was yeah. twenty eight euro. Plus petrol, and also because it was very small, the petrol was, I think it was like 10 quid in petrol at the end. So yep. it, it balanced it out uh, very well with my time constraints and and everything. But yeah, I have to okay, get okay. all these so, bloody logistics to, to go there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so 28 euros for the car, 10, 10 for the petrol, you're up to 38. Correct. Um, you didn't have to take a day off work because you're probably home working, so you could still connect. But if you had to take a day off work ah, and you couldn't get paid for correct. it. Correct. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, you have to take, I think there's some companies that have the um, días de asuntos propios. Like, you know, oh. they know how difficult these things are and you can take one day to do those things. But, you know, that, that wasn't my case, uh, fortunately. But, yeah, yeah, you literally... Uh, get one day of your calendar, one morning, pretty much. Sorry, uh, yeah. that you have to do for that, and, and also there's some pre-work that you need to do because in my case, I need to do that uh, medical check, take the photographs up to date, blah blah blah, and you know it, it has a little bit of lead work if you don't have a, a gestor, but obviously the medical check you <laughs> you have to do it by yourself. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, actually, uh, uh, in the uh, Arturo Soria region and probably around the Alcala, around this building, there are places where you can get that done quite easily. Take photographs, mm. have a, a medical check. You have to do some type of uh, coordination test. Uh, yeah, as we exactly. Know. So, but these, this is all the process that you have to go through. So, yeah, exactly. Um, and just just one yeah. thing that I remember uh, to that I wanted to to mention as well. The, this process is because I have a Republic of Ireland license and I want to swap it for a Spanish one. Okay, if you have, if you already have a Spanish license. I have been told that if you go to the medical, an approved medical center, and you do the medical check, they will do the whole process for you and they will yeah. uh, send you the license by post and that's it you don't have to even go to the DGT you don't have to do anything like that okay so just to to make everything clear that you know it, it might look a little bit well, troublesome but because my situation well, that's what happened yeah well that, that's what exactly. happened the last time that I had to renew my license it was just you go to one of these official um clinics or something I think they're called I mean there's, yeah. there's specific places for the driver's yeah. license and yeah when, when yeah, I went there these, I mean, these if people you... also did COVID tests so I was a little bit concerned well yeah well 
<laughs> They've expanded their business, of course, but I, I think um, if you want to get any type of official license, let's say, whether it's a hunter's license and you need to pass some type yes, of test or, correct. Same thing, or whether, same thing. Or whether or, or a driver's license or you're getting it renewed or whatever and you have to do this, um, as I said, a, a, an eye test or you have to do a, a listening test where they put on yes, you know, your correct. headphones. And, I, I did and something very similar but much more in depth. Uh, in London for my Australian visa. I have a partner visa because I'm married with an Australian uh, citizen. And this one in London, it, uh, okay, uh, it's totally different things, okay? And, and the Australian uh, visa regulation, as we all know, they are quite tight, but they did it x-rays. <laughs> well, ask Novak Djokovic, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we are not going to get political, Stuart. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Uh, seriously. I'll, I'll edit that. <laughs> just just a little bit of a breadcrumb there <laughs> and it, it yeah. was pretty much the same thing and i remember it was 300 pounds british pounds in this yeah. medical center in nicebridge very close to harrods because that was the only one in london that it was approved by the australian embassy to get the visa done and as i said it was like blood test urine test uh, chest uh, x-ray it, it was like full full on it was full on to make so, sure you were fit to, to hold that visa. To, to, right. Exactly. Fit to go down under. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's it. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, the Australian government charges you. I mean, we're, we're getting off track, but they, they charge yeah. you for everything. I mean, I mean, here in Spain, to get a passport, it's about 20 euros, I think. It's, it's not an expensive uh, task, whereas mm -hmm. an Australian passport is in the hundreds of euros to, uh, well, Australian dollars. It's in, the, it's in the hundreds to get one. Well, one day I will talk about my uh, Australian visa process, <laughs> but it was oh. in the thousands of, of Australian dollars to, to get that. <laughs> so. well, uh, well, that's it because they, uh, I mean, I've heard up to 7,000 Australian dollars. I don't know whether that's what you paid, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard it's a lot of money. Well, just, just the actual administrative process. So if you go in the in me account, I'm, you know, those that I might be, a little bit more uh, familiar with the process and, and how things work in Australia. You have this uh, in me account that you have to go everything through the process and upload all the documentation. Just on the fees for the Australian government to consider my case, it was yeah six something almost seven k. But on top of that, you have to put, as I said, the medical check, background check because I have lived in different countries. <laughs> The time consuming that I get the criminal checks from Spain, from Ireland, from the UK, uh, they re they request me a list of all the trips that I have done abroad for the ten the past ten years, and unfortunately, it, it was like three extra pages of places that I have been for for personal reasons or for professional reasons. But yeah. just collating all that information, it was so time consuming and sometimes very, very yeah, well, the, in money wise. I, well, I get the impression that the idea is to, to try to put you off doing it, basically. You know, I think that's that's probably what it is, not only from a uh, money point of view, but also from the time consumption point of view to, yeah, yeah. to exactly. be able to get that visa. That That's obviously one of the, the objectives that they have. But uh, yeah, uh, it's it, it, it's crazy. But anyway, we digress. Now yeah. the um, <laughs> so, so so you managed it because the just going back to the traffic department, it's one of these uh, places that does close quite early in the day, isn't it? It's they a, open at ten. Two thirty. Close at two. <laughs> ten to two. All right, good. So you've got a four hour window to get things done. My appointment was at eleven, um, yeah. and. Yeah, the, the, o sea, to, to get there and to get the process, some kind of like receptionist that gives you this kind of like ticket with your number, blah, blah, blah. And there was, I think there was, I counted 12 desks uh, that at the time that I arrived, there were only four or three or four in operation. And then yeah. when it was my time to, to actually, you know, being called forward, probably there were like six in total. So not, not all of them, they are, you know, being 50%. run. Correct. No, a lot of them be run. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, but that's common everywhere you go when you want to get yeah, something done. Yeah, there will be done. seats, I mean, go... or maybe yeah, because of the distance or holidays of people. You know, yeah, I, I don't expect yeah. everybody to be in, but you know that that is the yeah. amount of desks that they have available to yeah, to yeah. do all these things. Yeah. So, yeah. But, <laughs> so, so, but but as I said, that's common if you go to the social security or the hacienda, you'll Correct. see yes, yes, um, yes. 
12, 12 desks, but maybe only five, six, seven people work. Yeah, I, th- I think every public, you know, this is, I have made this up as, as I speak. I think every public servant has their own desk or their own position. And as I said, you know, everybody is entitled to holidays or a day off or maybe they're sick or, or whatever. And if you are not there, that doesn't mean that. Break. <laughs> Correct, exactly. Or have your pincho de tortilla in the middle of the morning. <laughs> well, I mean, everybody's entitled to a, to, to exactly. a morning tea break. I mean, I mean, let's be honest. At eleven o'clock, Absolutely. people shut down their their desk and go and have something to eat, go and have a smoke or whatever. Exactly. That's a workers' right. We, we Correct, can't complain Correct. about that. Absolutely. So basically, I, I sit uh, in front of this lady, thinking that oh, I got this. I'm gonna crack on ten minutes. In, out, job done, bye bye. <laughs> How ingenious I was. <laughs> and I want to say hi to Nick uh, from here <laughs> because anything that could go wrong, it go wrong. Went wrong. <laughs> Well, that's uh, that's the and the, basic, that's, uh, and, and the thing is that it wasn't my fault, but I wanted to say apparently. Uh, even though I have the paper certificate for the medical people saying, you know, I'm fit to drive. Uh, this is the signature, the stamp of the doctor, the registration, blah, blah, blah. So this lady, well, it's not in the computer. So apparently there was some kind of problem from the medical center transferring that information into the DGT server, computer, you name oh, okay. it. And I, even though I have the paper, this le- well, if I don't have it in my computer, I cannot help you. What it wasn't, it wasn't in her system. Correct. If it was in the system, well, it's not my fault. It's not her fault, but she cannot help me. It's like, okay, great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so it's, it, it's it, it seems to happen a lot, and again, I'm sure it's not unique to, to Spain that you go into a bank and you, you try to get something done, and they say, "Oh no, the the, the system's frozen or something." Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean. You, I mean, you work. I mean, you work in IT, uh, Ivan. So, uh, what goes wrong with these programs? There's just too many people using and, them, or and anything could happen. But at the end of the day, in this, I assume they classify as critical services because, and, and also, then they have to be running through a very smoothless process because they are talking about powerful med- servers and correct and private information. Uh, GDPR applies medical information on top of that. You know, it's not like a, a I don't know, a 15 year old. Uh, I'm gonna put code a couple of evenings and off you go. I think this is gonna be a robust, robust thing with different servers, with backups, with redundancy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Shit happens and it might happen probably, but seriously, I did my medical check on Monday that week. I went to the DGT and it on wasn't Friday. through when you went. Okay. Correct. And it was on Friday. I don't know. Maybe it, I did it half an hour before the appointment or something went wrong. Maybe it could happen. You can understand it. Exactly. Yeah. And it, like, oh, man. So I have to go. Basically, I'm not going to leave my, my seat because I don't want to get another appointment, go on the queue, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the medical exam obviously has an expiration day, so you cannot <laughs> take forever. So I called the medical desk. I put in a speaker to talk to this lady. And I, I felt so helpless because <laughs> this lady basically refused to help. No, no, this is not my job. You know, it should appear in my computer. And, you know, I totally understand you, but it's not my fault that I did exactly what the DGT told me to do. And I still, mm-hmm. I came here at the time that I was told to come and I cannot do something that I can, I brought everything, every paper, every photograph, every, every signature to do it. Yeah. <laughs> And you're not you're not willing to, as you said, to to go back to the end of the queue and make another appointment for another day because, as you said, you're not from Alcalá de Henares. It wasn't easy to get there. It took you exactly. a while to get the appointment. Correct. Uh, it's correct. not an easy system to break into. No. Correct. Correct. So again, you know, please call your manager to come in. I, I was on the phone with the medical service. No, no, we have sent it, and they sent me a PDF with. I don't know. I think it's. Accuse the recibo, like the receipt that they have already the done. Official, the official what, reception. Correct. That, what, that they have already done what they needed to do with, with my medical exam. And, and the uh, manager said, no, well, first of all, refused to see that receipt because, you know, if it is not on the system, it's not my fault, it's not the fault, but they cannot help me. But, like, you know, whatever has to be done in the background, you know, has done and, and I have the receipt to prove it. And, you know, it's not my job, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, you are a public service, public service, you service the public. So what's, what's wrong with this? So it took a little bit well, of okay. back and forward. And after an hour and a half, 
Um, apparently, they they found or they called somebody at the end. Maybe I don't know. They, they I inspired them some pity or something, but they make some calls and everything was okay at the end. But why why is the need what they, to go through all that? What drama? they don't do, but what they don't do is they. I mean, this is probably just my way of thinking here. But what a person should do in a public service like this is take your information. Say, look, the information is not through now. I'll, I'll I'll call the the center and check that everything's okay. Give me your number, you know, and 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 if there's any problems, we'll get you back in here next week. You don't need to get an appointment. Just you know, just you know, just right. wave to me, and you can come over when I go to break. I mean, that that's what somebody really that's should be doing in this situation. The public right? looks like, yeah, absolutely. R- rather rather than putting the 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 all of the problems on you again to have to go through the process. So you're the one who had to get on the phone. To call the place to get a PDF sent. That's what that person should be doing. Okay, uh, Mr. Uh, Ivan, uh, I'll take care of it for you. Don't worry. I won't waste any more of your time. I'll write it down here. I'll get it done when I've got a bit of time free uh, right. later right. today. And in the perfect world, that's what would happen. But it doesn't happen, unfortunately. Yeah, and, I think um, I think you you and me, Stuart, we believe in in utopia. We're talking about these kind of things, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> I couldn't well, agree more again, with, with the description that you have put in there, but you know, I don't, I don't want to say anything too negative because people get angry when they hear these things. But the system set up for the gestores to do these jobs, right? There's a colegio, there's a colegio de gestores. And this is what this was, this was the point that I was saying about my friend. He's made a lot of money over the years from situations like this where you. You're not going to go back again and have to go through this. So you're going to pay 50 euros to somebody like that to mm-hmm. get them to do it for you. And then you get that stress out of your life. Correct. And the, yeah, yeah. I and, totally agree with that. That's it. And if there's a problem, the, the, the gestor has to go back again and not you. And so the, the whole system set up to favor this type of um, individual, the, 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 the gestor de tráfico or the, or the gestor de immigración or whatever, uh, so that people like yourself don't get sucked into the system and come up against come up against brick walls that shouldn't exist in the first place but yeah exactly but exactly. again but again we but again i mean we can sit here arguing all day about the <laughs> subject and never get anywhere you know but but it is what it is yeah, anyway, yeah no, no. We'll, we'll, i totally agree with that yeah. one yes it's, it's unfortunate anyway, but, and, 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 oh, well, but at, at the end, at, in the in the end you got it done right I got it done. Apparently, I have a paper okay. that says that I have a, this paper is my provisional driving <laughs> certificate, okay. and I should wait for my Spanish driving license on the post. Again, I st- <laughs> oh, still sick. to be told for another episode the, the motorbike UK license. Okay, that, that's that's, <laughs> another, that's another that's another story. I don't know All if right, it's a fight want... that I want to to battle at any point. Well. Who knows? Who knows? That's it. We'll have to wait and see. Now, you wanted to talk about something else. You sent me a, a link to something before about uh, Cantabria and the COVID passport. They've decided to scrap that, have they? Yeah, I, I read today in the news something about La Tierruca. That's how we refer the, the people from Cantabria. We have that uh, very regional ending, the Uco and Uca ending, that is very um, north and very Cantabria sounding like. And apparently, they have decided today they to scrap the COVID certificate to, to get into bars and restaurants effectively. So mm. different changes, and I, I read the article. Well, um, yeah. Basically, yeah. they say that well, now uh, it doesn't respond to any medical reason and it's not stopping the, the spreading or not the spreading of the of the yeah. Omicron virus. So <laughs> apparently they have been <laughs> the ones to, to scrap it. I think other communities, they have been talking about the same thing. Catalonia, they were talking about the same thing, but that was... A piece of news that I uh, came across today, so I just wanted to share it. Yeah, well, as we know, the COVID certificates sort of it depends where you are in Spain, isn't it? So here in Madrid, we don't have one. Mm. Um, I think there's one in Valencia. There's we've been one in Cantabria, Galicia, Andalusia, I think. So it sort of depends where you are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, depending on I the was speaking to a <laughs> yeah, well, that's right. I was speaking to a a, a police officer in. Cantabria. I can't remember the name of the place that he works. Uh, Castro de... Castro Urdiales, maybe? That's the one. That's the one, yeah. And uh, I said, um, uh, the COVID passport is in place there. And he said, yeah, but a lot of the bars are not even asking for it. So it was sort of, 
it was sort of a half uh, bake measure from the beginning, I think, that the politicians brought in in order to try to control the Christmas yeah. uh, campaign or whatever. But uh, as we know, the uh, populist president that you have in Cantabria, Mr. Revilla. Populist? Who, Populous. <laughs> I don't know, but he was he was uh, on the television a few weeks ago pushing something on uh, El Ormigueron. That's where he generally pops up from time to time. He seems to be a bit of a philosopher, doesn't he, this uh, Mr. Rivilla? He is everything, <laughs> apart from a government, apparently. Because, yeah, he, he loves as much the media as the media loves him because he always comes with some headlines, you know, that is obviously what the journalists love about this kind of you know public uh, figures you know That's you it. have a little bit of That's power or, or public exposure and every time that you <laughs> we have a saying is pen cada vez que habla sube el pan <laughs> yeah yeah so uh, the translation would be that every time a politician opens their mouth the price of bread goes up that's right <laughs> but uh he's an interesting character because he's always trying to sell a book or he's always he always comes on the television with a, a, a tin of anchovies or uh, the sobaos which are also a, a product typical in cantabria he's always trying to sell something promote the region mm. but uh i get the impression that i mean he must be popular because he's been there for a while now hasn't he? let's let's put it this way this guy has never been the most voted party of cantabria ah okay, okay? so he's always and, got there with coalitions and and, and like doesn't matter what and and you know and he, he's very good at what he does, which is stay in power at any cost. That's a, if I need to sign with a PP, I will sign with PP. If I need to sign with PSOE, I will sign with PSOE. If I need to PSOE and um, whoever, I will sign that. But this guy, I, I, I don't think, I don't recall any other case in Spain where the third most voted party is in the power. It's, it's the actual president. Because, you know, you can have, yeah. like, your minister or whatever. But this guy is not even the first, it's not even the second. It's the third power. Yeah. <laughs> and has been the president. Because, uh, because, because he doesn't belong to the Partido Popular. He doesn't belong to the uh, PSO. He doesn't belong to Podemos. He belongs to, a like, a nationalist party. Is it a, a Catalan it's, nationalist party? Uh, ca ca sorry, a Cantabrian nationalist party? It's, it's regionalist. They they want to distance Regional. themselves okay. from, from nationalists. Like, you know... I, I, Probably I'm not the best one to explain the difference, but the difference to me is like nationalists pursue somehow uh, independence one way Separation. or the other. Yeah, okay. Correct. While these regionalists, what they want is, I don't know, to, to encourage the region. Correct. Now give visibility. And how that works in Spain is um, I vote for you in the government, in the, in the actual parliament, the Spain parliament. And for the budget, the typical uh, negotiation, you vote for me in the budget and you build a highway, you build a train for my region. <laughs> so this is how these negotiations in, in yeah. very broad strokes uh, look which like. Is, which, is, which is what's been happening in the Basque country for, for decades. Correct. And, um, and you can see that um, the, the place that I mentioned before, Castro uh, Urdiales, is the bordering town with yes. the Basque country, and correct, correct. and there is a difference when you when you cross the border, isn't there? That's it. And the, a little bit of a difference, more orographic, because uh, it's in between uh, mountains and, and everything. But yeah, Castrojales is very famous because a lot of uh, population from the Basque they have like a second home, like a weekend home. That's right. It's less than it an hour cheaper. away from from Bilbao. And yeah, cheaper. it's cheaper, you are on the sea. And a lot of people from Cantabria work in the Basque country because of the industry as well, don't Correct, they? as well, because, again, a lot of... But this this is not new. This is, like, from decades and decades. And yeah. the industry has been promoted in the Basque country and in Catalonia it, because money and investments, south mouths and south uh, historical claims that these kind of um, parties might have, okay? So, again, I don't want to get... Political, no, but, well, but, yeah. we don't want to get too political, but 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 you can see that that this is the. I mean, even now, uh, uh, people are uh, saying that the negotiations are going on with these parties that you know thirty years ago wanted to separate from Spain, and now that now they're dominating the politics with the by approving budgets and all of these things, and they correct. do get benefits for these regions, don't they? That's the idea. Correct, correct. It, they they don't they know what is their market and um, they have a word for this like hinge party pol, uh, partido bisagra. They they don't expect to uh, 
uh, to be empowered because I, I, I'm probably they are aware about their limitations, obviously, but with the electoral law in Spain, they have a certain representation within a region that because of the electoral law in Spain, that gives them so much power, you know, in percentage in, in the whole country, that party will be, well, less than 5%. I'm just talking or inventing it. But and it can that, influence national politics. Correct, but maybe they can have many more MPs than another, I don't know, journalistic uh, party because in that region that has not been that much present. Okay, so I, I think well, that's been, that that's always been the problem with uh, Izquierda Unida. Correct. They haven't been exactly. able to they haven't been able to turn the votes that they got into seats in the parliament. Whereas exactly one of these that. parties that you're talking about with a lot less votes get more representation. Exactly that one. Exactly that one. So the thing is that these hinge parties, they know what they have to do to stay in power and it's like fight their corner. And in those mm. negotiations, you know, you vote all your MPs will vote for my budget and yeah, you will develop that that area uh, with the detriment that other areas and typically it has been uh, Extremadura or Andalusia that like the typical example that in, in this kind Cal of Castilla y León. Castilla -Leon, they're both Castilla really. Um they have been the ones who they have been not as industrialized on but again this is <laughs> Probably this is going to be a, a, topic, very... a topic for another day. That's it. That's it. No, <laughs> and sure, we will a have a lot of day. comments as well. In, in the... I just wanted to say well, on, on, the, on yeah. the Mr. Villa case, I did a little bit of investigation. It was ages ago. Okay. But this guy uh, started in the 60s, 70s. And this guy was a delegado del sindicato vertical. So the only um, trade union that was allowed during the dictatorship, it was this Sindicato Vertical. So this guy oh. was a delegate for that. So he was playing a, a big part during the uh, Frankist era okay. uh, in, a, in a public body from the Frankist government. <laughs> And he basically he has managed to stay in, in a position of power, in a position of public employment through a dictatorship, through different governments, uh, alliances with different parties with any kind of win. So basically what he now, what he knows very well is mm. this kind of, in my opinion, populist speeches to you know create an yeah. opinion, oh, this guy is very, um, how, how do you call it, like approachable or... Um, <laughs> Well, he understands the he understands the the Spanish character and what they look Correct. for probably when it comes to voting. So Correct. He's had, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's had those de decades and decades of experience. He knows what to say. He knows where to go. He knows what television programs to appear on, he, and he knows how to come across. That he is a professional. Well, exactly right. That's exactly <laughs> to, right. To stay in power. Actually, or to, to, this is his job well, daily. So what? Well, well, exactly. I mean, that's what he, that's what puts the bread on his table, as they say, but um, on his kitchen table. But uh, yeah, I mean, if you go back into those times, then during that transition period, there are a lot of um, uh, prominent figures that, I mean, the, the president of uh, Real, Real Madrid Football Club, Florentino, was, was, was a politician back in, the, back in that period of time. You know, a lot of the, a lot of the important business people, at the, a company that we mentioned before we started recording, the OHL, he was a politician back in those times as well. So there's a lot of connections that, that are not really clear that, that do determine how things happen, right? Yeah, that, that transition or so-called transition, maybe it wasn't that much of a transition after all. <laughs> well, again, again, we won't we won't talk too much about it because we'll get... We'll get what kind uh, of political sure episode criticism. did you involve me in, Stuart? Seriously? No, 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 that's okay. <laughs> We'll, uh, we'll cut it short. But anyway, good speaking to you again, Ivan, and uh, we'll be in contact, okay? Pleasure as always, Stuart. Still safe. All right, see you later. Bye-bye, <laughs> bye-bye, bye-bye.